First of all, I would like to thank organizers of this event and also this event because it was the initial point that I learned about massive gravity and uh, by gravity. <laughs> okay, let me start with a definition for modified gravity. I use this definition that uh, if you, when you say about modified gravity, modified modification of gravity is just adding new degrees of freedom because you, it's not a, a very well defined uh, uh, term modified gravity. You can go for phenomenological classification in a paper by, uh, I guess, Justin Hurry's this uh, review uh, at all. So, the first um, guess that if you want to add a degree of freedom is just, just keep a scalar field. So, and then this uh, Galileon is the most famous one. You can add tensor degrees of freedom, which goes to massive gravity, by gravity, and uh, we heard a lot about them. And we will, I think, have another talk by Rachel tomorrow. And uh, I just put these names because you can say go to non-local gravity, F of R, and all of them. But I just want to mention that, uh, as Rachel mentioned uh, in her first lecture, that this ghost freeness, which is important in modified gravity, uh, in massive gravity, by gravity, and Galileo uh, is coming from the same root, I guess. So, let's start with Galileo. If I don't want to, okay, I just want to add a scalar, one degree of freedom. So, what does it mean? It means that I just want to have uh, two initial conditions. I mean, um, the place and then its velocity. So I need at the level of equation of motion to have such terms in principle. Because if I have these terms with two derivatives, then you need just two initial conditions, means one physical degree of freedom, okay? And you know that uh, from Euler Lagrange uh, method, that if you have this L, If you have this Lagrangian here, then Euler Lagrangian uh, method says that uh, you need uh, the variation of delta L to delta P is equation of motion in principle, no? So if you say, I, if you demand that you need this kind of term at the level of equation of motion here, then you need just to multiply by a pi to get to Lagrangian in principle, okay? But it's not the old story because, in principle, if you start with these kind of terms, okay, then you, as we said, that you imagine that you get these terms, but you can get some uh, dangerous terms too. Let me just write one example from here. I just put n free. If it's in Lagrangian, no? then you have such terms like this, no, at the level of equation of motion, something like this. Uh, it's one of those terms. Then if you take these derivatives from here, you get something like this. Oh, one of these terms, actually. Should be like this, no? Box by a square. And you can see the problem here. If this acts on this, everything is okay, no? If this acts on this, then you get four derivatives on pi at the level of equation of motion. So, what you need is to be very careful. Okay, it's just a convention, I will show you. Let me just bring all of them. You should be very careful to choose these coefficients because this term potentially can produce these dangerous terms, but then if you put these two here, this one, minus one, minus two, and two here, then what you get is exactly uh, two derivative terms on each scalar field at the level of equation of motion. For details, the paper by Alberto et al. Okay, in the following, yeah, okay, they are very beautiful, they have a lot of phenomenology, but uh, 
What is important for me is just these uh, relative coefficients here, okay? Which kills the ghost in principle. So, I'm not going to through these the details of these structures, but just, I mean, just be careful about these coefficients. Good. Now, by connection. It was a review for Galileon because at the end I want to show you that how you can get by, uh, Galileon terms from by connection model. Okay? So the motivation for by connection is that when you have two metrics, I, for me it was actually, that uh, when you have two metrics you have these uh, uh, problems that what is the meaning of causal structure, which metric couples to matter, and everything. You know? And they are, I think, as, as far as I know, that. Uh, <laughs> Still, there are open questions. Okay, so I thought that if I go to have two connections, maybe I can address some of them. Because if you look at geodesic equation, let me just put it this side. Then I can think as a connection as a kind of force somehow. It's like second law of Newton. Oh. I know it is the, not what Einstein thought about, but uh, okay. Uh, and if you have two connection, what happens? If it's force, I know how I should behave with them. If I have two force, I just add them. So if I have two connections, I just add these two terms together, okay? It's F1, F2. So for me, then it was just like this. If I have two connections, it's, it's, like, like, it's like one connection just curve the manifold, the other one curve the manifold too, and then I just sum up. Good. And I thought that I can uh, escape at least some of those problems with biometric models. Now I'm going through a specific model, but there is uh, one assumption here, that I assume that the curvature uh, I have a curvature superposition. If I, I mean Riemann tensor, the total Riemann tensor is Riemann tensor for gamma one plus gamma two. Then I made this, uh, this uh, Lagrangian, and you can see that uh, I had to use this uh, auxiliary metric because otherwise it is not a scalar. Uh, you could go to Eddington model actually if you don't want to use these, kind of, uh, these metrics. If you do it and by field redefinition, that gamma is, oh, gamma is uh, gamma one plus gamma two over two. It's, uh, there's a missing two. Because if with these two, gamma is a connection under the transformation, coordinate transformation, okay? So I just change the variables to this gamma, this gamma, which is a connection, the average connection, and this uh, difference tensor. Okay, omega is 10, so they have these indices actually, these three indices. And if you put these variables into the, this uh, Lagrangian, you get this one. Okay, I will show, show you what, what is delta. So I have this Lagrangian, which is Ricci scalar for gamma, and then uh, this delta, these new additional terms. And by Palatini, you know that the equations of motion says that this gamma should be Christopher symbol. So from now on, I will assume that gamma is case of a symbol. So I have just one metric and this difference tensor, omega. Good. Okay, another introduction. <laughs> While geometry, we usually assume that uh, the, we have metricity, that uh, the connection on a manifold is case of a symbol. So covariant derivative of metric is zero. It's what we usually assume. But if you broke that, uh, if you break that, then you get something like this. In general, you get something like this, but in a special case of wild geometry, you get a term uh, proportional to the metric with an additional uh, vector. Um, actually, I think its physics means that if you have parallel transformation, a transportation from one point to another point, on a geodesic, what you assume that is that the vector just change its uh, direction, but with wild geometry, its uh, uh, length also changed, okay? And uh, observationally, it's not uh, good, actually. It's ruled out. 
But in my case, uh, observation, it doesn't change anything. But just have this in your mind. No, because I just use this. <laughs> so if I have two metrics, I define that covariant derivative with metric, uh, uh, covariant derivative with gamma one for metric is this term. And then I just put this plus here for gamma two. Then the reason is that if you just sum these two equations together, because gamma is, uh, gamma appears linearly, so you get this gamma. And I assume that it's kiss of a symbol. Okay, so it should be zero on the right hand side. So I have no choice. This one, if it is minus, this one should be plus. Good. And if you do a little bit, a little bit of calculation, just adding and subtracting, you get that this gamma one should be this. This is case of a symbol with respect to this metric G. Okay, now what I'm going to do is just plug in these two gammas into the Lagrangian that I showed you. If I do that, you remember, it was some, it was this minus GR plus this delta term, which was a function of omega. And this delta is this, okay? So I'm going to show you a few examples that how does it work, actually. If you assume this x be metric plus this pi, that which I introduced in previous slides, this pi, capital pi, has index actually in this is, and it's d mu d nu pi, okay? If you do that, and then you assume that c be d alpha pi, then that th these terms, these terms, these additional terms get these forms. And if you remember the third slide, these are Galilean terms, exactly. And the point here is that I didn't assume any kind of ghost freeness or something. It's automatically, it automatically comes out of uh, the model, okay? I can go further and say, okay, if this, now I, I, I add a vector field, okay? I say that, okay, this x mu can be, x mu nu can be g mu nu plus this pi, this one, and then d mu a nu, because it should be symmetric, so plus d nu a mu, okay? So this non-metricity takes the form for this, the second line, okay? And the result is this. And for who are familiar with the, the literature, Lavinia Heisenberg and John Massimo Tassinato, they have shown that these terms, they assumed ghost freeness, and then they reached here again, with exactly the same terms, with the same coefficients. These relative coefficients are important, actually. Okay? I skipped the alpha square term because it's too big. And there is one property here that if you take this general case for a scalar and a vector field, then it enjoys a gauge transformation, U1 gauge transformation. Because with this transformation, this term and this term both are invariant. And I should say that these terms in here, these two terms, alpha capital pi mu nu uh, to alpha d mu a nu, this one is just derivative of this uh, vector field here, okay? So, it's conclusion that uh, in this model, these, sure. Uh, in this model, this, the ghost is killed automatically by the model, not without any other assumptions in principle. And there are some open questions for me, actually, that uh, what happens to fifth Galilean term? I couldn't recover that, actually, one. Then, you know, that uh, it's a paper by Cedric Defy and et al. that they did this covariantization for, because we, 
in Galilon, the original Galilon, I think they assumed the uh, uh, Minkowski background. But when you go to curved space time, then for building these stuff, these bikes, you need to use metric, and then you have derivatives on metrics. So you can produce uh, more than two uh, derivative terms when you have a curved background in principle. So they did this covariantization, okay? But uh, I don't know how should I do in this format. And it is it.